Hi guys, welcome back to another Unity Touch tutorial. My name is Devin, and today we're going to be creating a Unity 2D platformer control script. We will write it in a way that is cross-platform, so it'll work for both keyboard, joysticks, as well as virtual on-screen buttons for touchscreen devices, and we'll be using the Unity 4.6 UI for this. Now I have made a previous video on this subject, but in that video we were using the old GUI texture system and a touch logic script. This video will not use those, it will be somewhat similar, but we will start from scratch, making a few modifications and improvements along the way. So if you've already seen the previous video and you don't want to watch me rewrite it with those new improvements, or you just don't want to write the script yourself, you can download this new script from my website, devnation.com, and skip to part 2 where we add in slick edges and other new features. But if this is your first time watching, or you just want a refresher, I'd recommend watching the whole video. Don't forget, you could also like and subscribe to get notifications whenever I publish a new tutorial video. So without further ado, let's get started. So I've got a blank scene here, nothing new in it, just the default blank screen. I've got a 4x4 pixel sprite that I'm going to drag in and use as a platform. There we go, let's make it, let's make it big. -er. And let's go ahead and give it a collider 2D. So we're making a 2D platformer, so I'm going to use only 2D physics components because um, we don't need the third dimension. We don't need to worry about the Z axis. Uh, right, so let's call that our ground. Duplicate it and make a smaller, smaller platform thing. Let's come back here. Alright, so this will be our little platform that we could jump up on, and let's go ahead and make another guy over here. Alright, so for our player, uh, I, d I didn't prepare a sprite for him, uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and make a piece of geo, let's say a capsule. Um, let's go ahead and make a light real quick, directional is fine. Uh, so this guy, the capsule, when you make him, he automatically comes with a capsule collider, which is a 3D collider component. Uh, we don't need that, so I'm going to remove it and build our own using a box collider and a circle collider. Uh, so I'm going to combine these two to, uh, these two colliders to um, kind of match the shape of this uh, our graphics, our, our, our art, our awesome capsule art that we made. Um, so this guy can be, let's say, about that size, and move him down to about there, if that looks good. Yeah, that looks like it matches pretty well. Uh, next, let's go ahead and take the box collider, and... Mm, Scale it down in the Y a little bit, move it up in the Y, and that looks pretty good. Yeah, alright, so that is uh, that is it for our in-scene setup. So this will be our player. Call this player. Actually, it's not done. Um, we also need to add a rigid body 2D to our player so you can actually move around and stuff. Uh, if we play the game, you'll see that he just falls to the ground, because that's the rigid body at work. Um, but he also, if we knock him over, he can actually tilt over, and we don't want that to happen. So we could check on this uh, fixed angle box, and now, if, uh, if he runs into something, uh, he won't tilt over. Alright, so that's it for our, uh, our little test scene setup. Let's go ahead and get started in the script. I'm going to make a new script and call this player controller. And let's open that up. All right, so here we go. We've got our template script up. Um, let me just do some formatting here. All right. Uh, so we're going to need a few things up at the top. We're going to need a public variable for our speed. That'll be a float value, how fast we want our player to move. So I'm going to call that speed, and let's set it to 10 for default. Um, and let's also add in a jump height float. Um, actually, let's call that jump 
velocity. Uh, and let's also set that to 10 for now. Um, we're going to want uh, some private variables, a transform component, which will be our transform. Uh, same with a rigid body 2D component, or variable, which will be my body. And these we're just going to cache in here. So when the game starts, my body will be equal to the rigid body that is on this game object. Uh, same with my trans. It's going to be this dot transform. Uh, we're also going to need to be able to determine when our player is going to jump. We're going to need a bool. Uh, we're going to call it is grounded. And start that off at true. Uh, start that off at false. Uh, so we only want our player to be able to jump if he is on the ground. Uh, if we don't have an is grounded bool and we don't use it, then he's just going to be able to jump forever uh, in midair. I'm going to change this update to a fixed update. In here, we're going to call another function called move, and we haven't made this function yet, but let's make it right now. We're going to make a public void uh, function called move. And it's very important that it is a public function um, because we're going to be calling this from external uh, classes. We're going to be calling it from the the touch buttons that we make, uh, and we're also going to be calling it in here. So since it's public, we'll be able to call it on our 4.6 UI elements. And I'm going to want to pass in a value. The value I want to pass in is input dot get axis raw horizontal so uh, get axis horizontal this will uh, allow us to move with the keyboard as well as joysticks um, oh and hang on let me finish this thought so we need to uh, create a variable in here I'm going to call this horizontal input. Uh, so yeah, we're going to call this function, we're going to pass in whatever the horizontal input is, uh, and we're going to do something within here. So what is this uh, input docket access raw horizontal? Uh, well, if we go back to Unity, and we go to Edit Project Settings Input, you'll see up here there are two um, things that are predefined called horizontal. This first one is dealing with uh, the left and right and A and D buttons on a keyboard, whereas this bottom one is dealing with uh, joystick axis. So uh, since these are both defined in here as horizontal, our code will be able to pick that up uh, whether we're doing it with a keyboard or a joystick. So what are we going to do in this move function? We're going to uh, do something very simple to start. We're just going to say my body dot velocity is equal to a new vector two. Uh, actually, here it. Simpler way to um, visualize this. I'm going to say uh, I'm going to define a new vector two up here. Call it. Um, move fell for move velocity uh, and I'm gonna set that equal to my body dot velocity so this is going to grab whatever our current velocity is and then we're going to um, edit that move velocities dot X velocity and set that equal to the horizontal input times the speed uh, that we have up here so this horizontal input will um, give us a value between negative one and positive one uh, and then the speed will be whatever we input up here all right so now that we have that we're just going to say uh, set my body dot velocity back to this new move velocity oops move fell there we go all right so now if we go back to the game hit play 
will follow the ground because of gravity. Oh, whoops. First, we need to apply the script to our player, otherwise he won't be able to do anything. Alright, so now if we hit play, he'll fall to the ground, uh, but we can also move him around with A and D, or the left and right arrow keys. And we can also move him with a joystick, so that's pretty cool. We got that working. And he's actually falling kind of slow for my taste, so I'm gonna... Let's see. Yeah, that looks better. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and um, implement a jump mechanic, which we're also going to make a separate function for because we're going to need to call this later from our 4.6 uh, UI elements. Uh, public void, let's call it jump, and it doesn't need to take in any uh, arguments. Uh, so what jump is going to do is it's just going to grab my body dot velocity, uh, set it plus equal to our jump velocity times vector two dot up, and vector two dot up is just shorthand for a uh, vector that is zero x and one y. Yeah, this is essentially just adding our jump velocity to the y of our uh, current velocity. So in our update, we're going to uh, check for the input, oops, input dot get button down, uh, and we're going to look for a button called jump. Uh, again, if we go back to Unity and look at the input manager, you'll notice that there is a jump here, which is mapped to the space button and a jump here which is mapped to joystick button 3 which will be different on various controllers like I think it's I can't remember what it is but uh, yeah somewhere on the internet there's a diagram of what the joystick button names are for if you need to make your own uh, input definitions in here alright so back to the script so if we hit the jump button we're going to call the jump function Bonk. And if we head back to Unity, hit play, oops. Ah, need to close that off. Now if I hit the jump button, you see he jumps. Uh, but you'll notice that um, we're able to do this every time he jumps and we're not using our is grounded bool yet. So if I just keep hitting space, I'll be able to fly. Um, also, we're jumping really low. Let's see, let's, let's give him a better jump. Whoop, that is too good of a jump. He's got too much hops. 30 is also high. Alright, I can live with that. Alright, so let's give him 20. Alright, so let's go back here, and inside of our jump function, we're going to do that check for if uh, if he is grounded, head, want to change that. If he is grounded, then we'll allow him to jump. But if he's not grounded, then he's not going to do anything when the jump function is called. Um, right. So we're checking for is grounded, but right now is grounded is set to false, and it's never changed to true, so we'll never be able to jump. All right. How are we going to allow him to jump? Well, we're going to do that in the update. We're going to make a line cast. So is grounded is going to equal the result of this line cast. The line cast will return false if it hits nothing and true if it hits something. Um, so it's a physics 2D dot line cast. And what are we going to cast? We need a start position and an end position. Um, and we're also going to use a layer mask, um, and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, but first off, let's just start with our start position. The start position is just going to be my trans dot position, and then the end vector. It, well, in my last video, I made a an empty game object that was just like sitting here, and you can move it around wherever you want, or we could just hard code in a value. Uh, now let's 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 stick to the old method. So let's call this the 
tag ground and let's give it let's give it a little icon so we can see it in editor come on let's put it there and parent it to the player and let's go ahead and zero it there and negative one is fine or maybe a little more right so we're gonna do a line cast from the player right here down to the tag ground which will be right here and we're gonna use that to check to see if we are touching the ground so I'm actually going to make another variable here actually it could be here another transform variable called uh, tag ground and at the start we're gonna look for tag ground and it's going to equal game object dot find and it's going to find this dot name so this dot name is this game object uh, name which is not what we want to end at and we want to actually end at tag ground that's what we called it right yeah so this uh, function will find an object called tag ground that is parented to this object and we want that transform so here we just say transform dot position right and I'm gonna go ahead and make this public real quick so we can like just temporarily so we can see it in the inspector when it changes uh, from true to false Alright, so there's our is grounded. If we hit play, you'll see that it checks on. Um, it checks on when the game starts, but even if the tag ground is not, so like now it's casting a line from here to here. Uh, even though the tag ground is not, uh, even though that line that line cast is not hitting the ground, it's still returning true. Uh, the reason for that is because it's hitting its own collider in the uh, player game object. So uh, to make it ignore that that uh, player game object we're gonna have to add in I'm gonna make another variable doop, doop. make it a public layer mask and we'll call this the uh, player mask and we're going to add that in to here. So now this uh, this layer mask argument at the end is an optional argument, um, but it pretty much says, all right, anything that's not included in this layer mask, ignore it. Uh, yeah. So if we switch back to Unity. You'll see we get a new drop down menu, uh, and this will have all of our layers in it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer called player uh, and assign that to our player layer. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, and now you'll see that it shows up here, and I want to collide with everything except the player. So now I've got everything checked except the player layer. And now if we play, you'll see that he hits the ground, it turns on. If we leave the ground, it's off. So that's exactly what we want. And we can no longer we can no longer spam space to fly. So this is it. Right now we have a basic platformer control. Um, one thing that you'll notice when running around is if we move and hit a wall and we're still holding down the uh, the move button we're gonna stick to that wall until we let go in part two of this tutorial we'll fix this issue as well as add on-screen touch buttons so we can move the player on touch screen devices so be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications about new tutorials as they come out thanks for watching and i'll see you in part two